Welcome to the CBA 12 session. Just to introduce ourselves, my name is Jamie Novick, I'm here from CompuCore. Uh, we're a digital agency, we specialise in, in open source. Um, we've been working with CIVI for just over four years now, doing kind of uh, CIVI integrated kind of uh, Drupal sites, mainly specialising in, in work on kind of the, the Drupal platform. Um, and, you know, we like to build stuff. Um, so some CIVI providers, you know, they like to configure things uh, and you know, some CV providers like to host. Uh, we like to build new functionality. Uh, sometimes it's hard, uh, sometimes it's a bit more complicated. Um, but that's what keeps us interested. And uh, I think if I brought back a configuration job to the rest of the team, they'd look at me a little bit blankly and say, hang on, why, why are we doing this? So, um, so um, a few of the clients that we work with, uh, we, we've been working with uh, a number of different clients, small and large, uh, Beacon Society, uh, we're working with the Photographers Gallery, ATL, a big membership organisation, on a range of projects, both from uh, fundraising to membership organisations, um, building little bits of functionality with Civi, uh, and like I said, mainly kind of around Drupal. Um, so, what is Civi HR? So, I guess my first question is, I know that some people in the room have heard of Civi HR already. Can I just get a hand up? Who's, who's heard of Civi HR already? So, everybody but, but one. I saw this say. I'm curious to see what this is. Okay. Here. Cool. Uh, so, how many people in the room are like devs or implementers? I guess. So we've got two devs. No. No. Okay. Uh, and how many <coughs> people are kind of looking at CVHR from kind of an end user perspective? We've got one, two, three. Okay. Three. So there's a bit of a mixture there. So I'll try and uh, like keep it relatively non-technical uh, for everyone. Um, so, um, a little bit about uh, City HR. City HR is actually the brainchild of uh, a charitable foundation from the UK called <coughs> Zing. Uh, and actually we've got a couple of members from, a, uh, from Zing, well not strictly Zing here today, but sort of might be in the back book from, from up, which is kind of associated with it. Um, so, uh, Zing was set up a few years ago uh, by uh, a fairly wealthy benefactor who had been successful in the IT industry. Uh, and the goal was uh, to help enable non-profits to do better and more with their IT. Uh, and originally it started out as, uh, from what I understand, as a grant-making organisation. So they were providing grants to uh, a few partner charities in order for them to invest in IT. Uh, and invariably what seemed to happen would be that they'd make a grant for some IT investment and then the charity would not spend it that wisely. Uh, so the money would get kind of burned. Um, and you know, the, the team at Singh sort of thought, well, is there a better thing that we can do here, you know, in order to make the money go further? Um, and so they had a look around, uh, and uh, they looked for an alternative, uh, and uh, the conclusion they came to was that, well, actually, seeing kind of the open source model and how that kind of adopts to, uh, adopts to the non-profit sector, why don't we seed an open source development instead? Um, and they looked around uh, and they saw the Civi CRM community and saw how successful that was uh, and thought, well, hang on a second, maybe what we should do is to partner with kind of Civi CRM community in order to develop uh, something similar. Uh, and the conclusion it came to, the, the market niche of having looked at various different products was that HR was a good place to start. It's kind of quite uh, congruent with Civi as an application, so it shouldn't be too far a leap to go to. Uh, and also is something that is in need and can be very expensive for non-profits. Um, so, um, the, the aim here has been to, um, to understand the needs of non-profits from non-profits. So, rather than us kind of going and looking at you know, all these applications that are out there and trying to just devise what we think the application should have, um, we've worked with uh, a number of pilot organisations across uh, several different continents, so US, Canada, UK and India, uh, in order to understand what their particular needs are to tailor HR to the needs of non-profits, which can be slightly different when you're dealing with, say, volunteers or large numbers of volunteers, as opposed to uh, in a cor corporation where um, you would normally have kind of uh, you know, full employment contracts and those kinds. So we're trying to tailor around those kind of different relationships. Um, so a little bit about the pilot clients. We've got uh, Farm Africa from the UK. So they've got approximately uh, 400 staff, quite challenging across six different countries with all the different legal ramifications that comes in. Uh, $50 million turnover, 
Uh, UK youth also in the UK, uh, 70, 70, 80 staff, uh, 8 million turnover or so. Uh, so we've got the uh, Valley Rescue Mission uh, in, I believe they're in uh, Canada. Uh, and uh, two other non-profits, uh, large non-profits uh, based in India, Sneha and uh, AKRSP. Uh, and also the, the NDP, uh, and I believe they're a, an activist organisation in, in the US here. Um, so, so, so we're working with these pilot clients, and I'll talk a little bit about the, the process that we kind of go through with them uh, a little bit later. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background on the team. Uh, so uh, we're the development team, so Compu Bob and, and, and we're the builders, but um, actually the project is split kind of between us and a team over in India called uh, Drishtan. And, and Drishtan provide uh, the project management and the product ownership of the project. And I'll talk about kind of the, the way that we're working in kind of a, an agile process. Um, but Drishtan are working with the direct contact with the, pri uh, the pilot clients in order to kind of understand and gather the requirements from them, gathering user stories uh, and prioritizing that and working with us. So, Everybody's kind of pulling together in order to, to kind of develop this and understand kind of the needs of nonprofits, and of course, even providing the funding. Vital. Cool. Um, so, in terms of the ideology for development, um, we actually came into this project uh, just over six months ago, uh, and, and we wanted to, to change a few things in, in kind of the way that the project had been directed, um, and. Uh, what we wanted to do was look at kind of a, a, a way of getting the, the best features out to market as quickly as possible. Uh, and obviously, I think most people here will have heard of an agile development methodology. Now, I think that agile personally is a buzzword which is thrown around all the time. Uh, and I think everybody will have their different interpretations of what they think agile is. Uh, I don't pretend to purport that we do an exact agile textbook process, and neither do I think it would be the, the best approach necessarily for this kind of project. Um, I would say that I think that Agile is uh, not so great for some client projects as well because it can be very difficult to manage the, the concept of, uh, well, we'll keep going until you know, the money runs out with actually delivering something to a fixed scope that a client generally needs. Um, but actually in this kind of case where we're, we're building a product and we have kind of a, a longer term horizon, uh, it's a really great way of working. Um, so what does this mean? Um, so we're being as user centric as we can. Uh, and this means that all the requirements we're gathering in uh, user stories and prioritizing those user stories in order to kind of understand what the, the, the end clients really need as opposed to having a big feature list. Um, and we're identifying the most important things and trying to deliver them first in order to give people kind of the, the benefits uh, of, of those kind of uh, developments as soon as possible. And we're doing this in a very iterative fashion. So we're building small pieces and trying to release small pieces and iterate the product. Um, and this is kind of moving away from previously with the, the City HR project. Um, there's been this kind of concept of uh, versions, uh, so going from version 1.4 to 1.5, 1.6. We're trying to move away from that to this is the new release element and this will be out at this point. Um, for, for some reasons in the roadmap we, we do still kind of refer to the versions and it just kind of tries to let everybody kind of know when they can expect so. so um, cool. Um, yeah, so in terms of kind of the, the, the agile process, you know, discover, understanding what the, the client needs are, uh, a significant amount of wireframing and then feeding back on those wireframes, trying to refine those as much as we can, uh, putting together a sprint plan, breaking down our project into two week sprints, and then getting that out to the, uh, the product owner, and then building and testing in a really iterative fashion during those sprints as well. Cool. Um, Right, so the question is, what's new? What are we working on at the moment? What are we going to see? Um, so uh, how, so, how many people have actually seen City HR before? Yeah, Tim's probably seen it before. Uh, so, okay, so some of them not seen what's already in there. So I might dip in there as well and go back and show some of the existing features and not just what's new. Um, but what's new and that we've been working on most recently is developing job contract history. So the previous version of the HR, okay, people could have a, a job contract. We've done a lot of work around trying to create a way for recording changes and iterations in a really sensible fashion in somebody's job contract. So let's say that at the end of the year, obviously people's terms may change, they may be promoted. Okay, so we've, we've looked in a lot of detail about how to kind of relate this in the HR system so that you have that 
that revision history of the contract in there in a really sensible way, and being able to export and kind of get it out of that. Um, we've done some work on job roles. Uh, so from the feedback from the pilot clients, what we understood was that within a non-profit, um, uh, people's jobs are not necessarily 100% assigned to one particular task or project. And so what we've done is try to create a, uh, a mechanism for flexibility whereby people can be allocated to particular projects or multiple projects and therefore be able to see who the funders are for those particular projects and making sure that you're able to kind of report and bring all of that data around. Um, we've got contact summary. Uh, so we're working on a contact summary so that you can log in and you get a picture of somebody with some information about uh, their, uh, some information about their, um, uh, the holiday, their leave, tasks that need to be done on there, and so on and so forth. And also, we've done a self-service portal. And this has been a big piece of work around, uh, uh, around trying to give, reduce the uh, effort that, a, uh, that a, an HR manager has to put into interacting with the staff. And in the, in the self-service portal, Users can, uh, staff members can log in, update their details as you would expect. Um, they can actually make leave requests uh, with manager approval. Uh, so the managers, uh, so the staff members can log in, create a leave request. The manager can log in, and they can see that leave request and approve it or reject it. Um, we've got HR documents and resources. So the uh, the HR admin can put all the policy and employment documents up there and say, okay, right, that's there. Everybody's able to download those and read those. Um, we've got emergency contacts so people can update their emergency contact details and get those into the system as well. Um, a staff directory, so all the uh, current staff are shown within the staff directory with a nice easy search to get around. Um, and we also have job vacancies as well so that you can see internal positions which are advertised and link through and then read more details of those and apply for those if you want to go through. So quite a lot of work being, has been done there. Uh, cool, right. This is the, the difficult bit, the, uh, the demo bit, right. Uh, so, job contract histories, let's do that. Uh, and I have to press exit show. Uh, so cool, can everybody read that? Is that okay? No, yeah, no, all cool. um, So, what we're looking at here is kind of a normal city contact, as you'd expect. People will probably find this relatively familiar. And you look, can log in and take a look here, and this is the person's job contract record. Um, we have a summary page with kind of the, the details, the basic details around the contract. So position, title, uh, contract type, normal place of work, dates of the contract, etc., and all of these things. Um, and uh, we have the full history tab as well. Uh, so here we're showing kind of changes in the job contract which, which take place. Um, so if I go back here, um, so what you'll find and what, you know, you were able to put in kind of the details of, about the contract, but what's really important is to be able to, for audit purposes and in case anything goes wrong, be able to track back and see what changes have kind of had in the terms of, of, of the contract to be able to get to that easily. Um, and so we have this change contract terms wizard here. Uh, so it comes to the end of the year and uh, the terms of the contract have changed. So I might put change contract terms. So we've got the wizard comes up with the existing terms and let's say that this person's position gets changed to king. Uh, and uh, we might say the notice period from the employer has changed now to be four months as well. Um, we've got the hours tab. So people are able to say uh, what the standard hours are for a particular location, whether they're part-time, uh, if you're full-time obviously it will take the actual hours from, from the standard hours, if you're part-time you can say, and it will calculate your full-time equivalent hours automatically for you there. Um, we have the pay tab here, so people can be unpaid or paid. Uh, if people are paid, uh, then we say which pay scale they are, and this is kind of like the, the basis and this helps to, to do all our reporting. Uh, and then in terms of kind of the pay, you can put that in if it's different from the pay scale, but we'll, uh, we'll default to the pay scale. Um, we can have multiple uh, currencies. Um, it does, it works out the pay estimate for uh, benefits and deductions. You can say when the pay cycle will be, uh, what will be, uh, what their pay will be per month or monthly, so based on the pay cycle. 
uh, and it would got benefits and deductions. So it would got benefits, so we could say, uh, and this is just, you know, you can add in any benefits that you need. So let's say bike is a benefit, and that's a fixed amount, and they get paid a thousand pounds for that. And perhaps medical benefits, and that's a, a percentage. Uh, and so that one there we would say, you know, two uh, percent, something like that, and it'll calculate the equivalent absolute amount of weight on the gross pay for you. And then you end up with your benefits. Uh, so you can also put in deductions. So there might be deductions for probably a bike's more of a deduction than the medical. Um, and then you've got your net pay per cycle, uh, which comes out at the bottom there. Um, leave. Uh, so uh, leave is actually quite a complex element of, of CV. So um, or, or leave is quite a complex element in general. Uh, and there's various different aspects of leave. So people can have vacation, and in different countries you have different types of leave that can be statutory as well. Uh, so CIVI support, CIVI HR supports having multiple different leave types uh, and actually toil as well. And we'll come to show that when we, when we go into the, into the self-service portal. So here we can kind of say, well, this person, maybe they've come up to 30 days vacation. Uh, who their insurance providers may be, uh, pension details as well, uh, and some notes around funding. So. And if I save this, you can see that it's asking me uh, for the reason for the change and then the effective date of the change. So um, the reason for the change might be obviously a change in contract terms, uh, you know, the guy's got promoted. Uh, the effective date, um, so you can put an effective date in the future uh, and then the system on the summary and all the reports will go off the one that is current for today's date and will automatically move to the one of the effective date in the future when that, when that passes. So uh, I will put this one in the past. Uh, the approach is selected in the past. You should we want to continue? And you can see here that the summary is updated. I'm now king of the world uh, and 30 hours per week. If I actually go to my full history, um, you'll see that it's put it in kind of the effective date order. I did have one that is to, to happen in the future there as well. Uh, and these are kind of the contract revisions that, that we would have, and you can see the changes there. Um, you can go in, obviously, and view a particular contract revision. So we go and see all the details here, upload uh, documents, employment documents to that if you need as well. Uh, and um, so one thing that we did quite a bit of work on here is, is to, some people might want to drill down into the history of a particular aspect of the contract. So let's say that you just want to see kind of the, the pay changes. So you're able to kind of log in here, uh, take a look at the kind of the history here, and this will pop up for you. And you can see kind of the changes in uh, the pay scale here, um, with kind of the breakdown of the benefits and the deductions in there as well. Um, you're able to kind of change this view if you want to a little bit, which is quite neat. Let's see, it removes the columns. Um, and then export this data to CSV um, sort of immediately from the screen. So I think it like concatenates stuff. It's in a field with extra. He says. Maybe not. Okay. Um, and on the full history side, you're also able to export the full history if you wanted to to CSV, which gets you that. So in case you need to go through and do any kind of analysis of all of that. Um, and all of this is integrated into the advanced search. So if you want to bring back a list of people who have a particular pay grade or pay scale, uh, then all of those details are kind of here for you to, to search by as well. So if I just uh, pay. So I can't remember which pay scale I think it's going to put back up So there we go. Um, so that's the change contract terms. Um, you're also able to correct an error on the contract. So uh, it might be that not every time you want to make changes to this contract, uh, actually it's because there's new terms have happened or a change. You might have actually made a mistake in the system and we don't want to create a new revision for that because that's incorrectly kind of representing what the reality is. Um, so you're able to go in here and collect, correct the error on the contract. Uh, and this will take the currently in place for, uh, uh, revision uh, and you can go through and just make these changes sort of as you need. So, and it will confirm if you say without making a, a new revision, yes. Um, any questions on all of that? <coughs> no, that's all good. Cool. Uh, right, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, 
well, I'm going to skip through. So I'm just going to go on to job roles. Uh, so um, rather than dipping up one slide to, to come back again. Uh, job roles. So job roles is still kind of in development at the moment. Um, so if I add a new role, uh, to explain, job roles is kind of about giving flexibility so that somebody could have more than one role within the organisation. Uh, there might be a situation, or in, in some situations, it might just be one job role to, for the individual. Um, but let's say that this person's job role is, uh, or project that they're working on is, senior uh, development manager. Uh, and we can say which contract this relates to. So this relates to the King of the World contract that we had before. Uh, what level are they at? What location are they in? What region? I've got dropped out that. Uh, the department, maybe some description. Yeah, cool. Um, and then, uh, I want to say that. Don't I? And here we can now talk about the, the funding for that role as well. So here we see we've got Washington Food and Shop. Oh, onto the other one. So here the funder, we can select a funder and we can say, okay, well this is the Diaz family or the funders uh, and they've funded 100% of the contract. And you can split the funding if there's kind of multiple people who are making that funding. Uh, and then the cost centers, so somebody might have one or more cost centers. Actually, this, is, this isn't quite right at the moment, it should be a lookup list, so it needs to be changed. Uh, so again, like how much of the, the salary is kind of, of this contract is funded uh, or goes to this concept, the cost center. And then we're in process of kind of building some reports around all of this data so that you're able to kind of look from a funder or from a cost center perspective at kind of how people's salaries are assigned and working through that. Cool. Any questions on that? That's all good. Cool. Um, contact summary. Uh, so this is something that's also uh, in development and not quite there yet. Um, and it's a quick view of the contact. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually show you the designs for it. If I have them. summary page, uh, we're looking to kind of bring all the details about an individual onto, onto one slide. Uh, so we'll have kind of people's key details, uh, information about their leave. So here's kind of like this, this summary kind of little graph about what leave they've kind of used up based on all the types. So generally it'll probably be kind of one, one leave type that people will have. Um, but you'll be able to flick through these and see kind of what other leave they have. Uh, days accrued in toil, toil days claimed. Um, and then also being able to kind of see, you know, sickness compared to staff average, compared to department average, based on the role information that we have. Um, and I don't want to show you that stuff again. <laughs> uh, and kind of key dates and stuff like that. So these are key dates in terms of uh, like the assignments of people starting and ending, etc. And those will light up, you know, depending on when they've passed, etc. So you can see where somebody is in, in kind of the process there um, immediately. Cool. So, um, so that takes me on to the self-service portal. I really haven't done these slides very well because it's been no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a bit exciting. Um, cool. So on the self-service portal, which uh, I'll dive into in a second. As I said, we've got um, the idea of the self-service portal is to try and take as much weight off the um, off the HR manager as possible and uh, we'll be adding kind of dashlets and blocks to the self-service portal. A little bit around the technical about this, uh, the self-service portal is kind of built out of Drupal, so we've got kind of CV integrated into Drupal, uh, so if people have kind of existing uh, development or experience with Drupal, then uh, this all kind of neatly works together. Uh, right. uh, 
So, um, I am logged in as that's Greg. So I don't want to be Greg. Be, uh, that's me. Cool. Um, so I'm logged in, in as a self-service portal. So this is also still kind of in development. So a little bit of the style is not quite there yet, but we're, we're kind of getting there. Um, so we have kind of like my, my dashboard, and I'm logged in as a staff member here. Um, so here you've got my details, uh, able to upload an image, and that obviously goes straight through into Civi uh, contact information. So I'm able to just edit kind of these details. Um, everybody's seen a, a form before, so I, I won't get into that too much. Um, and actually, uh, also edit, able to edit and update their emergency contact. Again, people have not seen the form before. Um, we have it actually so that people can have more than one emergency contact if they want to, uh, depending on what seems relevant. Cool. Um, so, uh, one of the things that we've spent quite a lot of time working with is around kind of uh, submitting uh, lead requests and working with Tor as well. Um, so, as a staff member, um, we would set up in the system who your kind of manager is. Um, and I'm able to then make a leave, leave request and that will then come out on the, uh, on the manager uh, portal. So both the staff member and the manager, this is not necessarily the HR admin, but the manager would have access to the self-service portal, be able to log in there. And then your HR department would have kind of like the God access to the back end of City uh, where they can administer kind of all of this sort of stuff. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so, uh, here I'm just going to request leave. I need to remember the dates here because otherwise it gets a bit confusing. So, I'm going to request leave uh, for the whole month of June. So, we've got a big one form here. Uh, details. It's my holiday. So let me go. Uh, and you can specify here, I mean, at the moment we just do it for all day or half day, but at some point we'll come back and, and look at um, doing that to kind of be out of the hour. I'm going to make that leave request then. Uh, so actually the notifications aren't showing at the moment, but this normally comes up as a notification after time uh, requesting, so that'll pop up for you, you know that that's come. Um, you'll actually get an email as well which notifies you to kind of say, yeah, these are the dates that you've requested, so you've got kind of a, a copy of that. Um, now, in a bit of a blue pizza fashion, here's a manager that I prepared earlier. Um, and if I just refresh that. The manager has the manager absence approval block here, uh, where they're able to kind of see and manage their, their approval. So we've got all, uh, you're able to split down and see vacation awaiting approval. We can see that uh, Jack's staff uh, is looking for a vacation. These are dates awaiting approval. Uh, the manager is able to open like quite a nice little calendar here, uh, where they're able to kind of see the dates that that person's asked for. So June, so Jack staff is asking for these dates. There's still a bit of styling to go on there in order to get the colours kind of highlighted. But the manager is able to see all of the leave uh, for any uh, any staff member who they are the manager for, and that would all come up there so they can see any clashes and note and identify whether there's any issues with that. Um, and they're able to uh, either approve it all, uh, they can reject it all, uh, or they can pick the days. Uh, this was a little bit broken before, so I might just uh, approve it all. Cool. Uh, and at this point, the staff member would obviously get an email. Uh, and if we go back to the staff member here, if everything's working, uh, we can see that uh, my leave for the 1st of June has all been approved here and actually my vacation balance has now gone into the negative. Um, we've kind of made a decision there which is at the moment not to put too much validation and rules around that because we want flexibility. We do kind of assume that you know, if you were speaking to your manager you might go and speak to him before making this leave approval request and the system kind of happens in order to give you kind of that validation or record of kind of the interaction. So we have quite a lot of flexibility around that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, the way we kind of see it is that, or the way that the Pi clients explained it to us was that um, people will request toil based on um, based on having worked additional hours. So we have that kind of first process there before, where you're able to kind of uh, obtain a toil balance by requesting that from your manager and saying, okay, well I worked last Saturday, therefore I should get 
an extra day of kind of toil. Oh, Tim, yeah. Just to clarify, in case anyone like me doesn't have an HR background, toil spans for time off in the room. Yes, of work. Thank you. Has anybody not heard of toil? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So there's this, there might be in 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 most organisations or larger organisations a situation where if you work over your approved hours, they would give you kind of the time off uh, based on you know holiday based on you having worked for those sessions. So if you work a weekend or something like that, they'll give you an extra day's holiday. Um, so that extra day of holiday kind of needs to be accrued, um, and it also. Um, in, in some organisations, it needs to be recorded separately from your main toil, uh, from your main holiday balance. I we used up 25 as my main holiday, but then there's this extra day that I have, but it needs to be kept separate. So the CBHR deals with all of that stuff. So um, here I'm able to request toil, same process as before. Um, you see, it's kind of coming up as a, a credit here. Um, and so again, I might say, well, actually, I worked uh, March 1st, so therefore to March 1st. Just one day. Worked that day. And I'll submit that. I think everybody knows what's going on here. So I think here now you can see that we've got toil awaiting approval. So the different types will come up as different tabs or buttons on the left here, make it really easy for the manager to identify what needs to be dealt with. <coughs> and I've got Jack Staff, and again I can approve that. Yes, approval. That's all approved. Uh, and then if I go to back here and just refresh, we can see that I've got approved and therefore I've got this toil balance of one. Um, and therefore I'm then able to use the toil. So, hey, actually now, you know, uh, I want an extra day's holiday in July. Uh, so I'm going to put that day off as well. All day. It's the day you owe me. And of course, Greg has no option but to give me the day off. So there we go, and I go with tick. Yes. Brilliant. And of course, the calendar here um, shows kind of the extra dates that have been taken off wherever it is here that Wednesday. And if I go back to my little calendar here, I'm able to open this one and take a look and see, oh, okay, these are the days that I've taken off and booked kind of from my, from my thing. So the style is a bit more complete there. So we have a similar process actually for, for sickness as well. Um, so um, people are able to report their sickness, so after the event. So I can log in here and I'm able to go, okay, well, uh, I was sick those two days, I need to explain why. Um, so I'll put in kind of the two days that I was sick. Three days I was sick. I was sick. My fault. And again, we have the same uh, approval process for sick uh, leave. So the sick are waiting approval, so the manager can come back or they can investigate that sick and ask for uh, copies of the documents and things like that and stuff. Um, so obviously the manager also has the ability to have his own leave and he might have his own manager, etc. Et uh, any questions on that? Cool. All, all seems good. Uh, what's next on the list? Uh, leave requests. So HR documents and resources. Uh, so um, I briefly covered the, the My Details. Uh, so there's actually a My Details tab here. Um, there, there will be kind of significantly more information that you're able to add about yourself here. Maybe you're uh, employment history and we're going to build up this page so that you know you're able to kind of put all of your details in and take all the stress off kind of the HR manager uh, and that will grow out. Um, HR resources, so um, uh, in most organisations what you'll have is that uh, the HR need to provide a certain level of documentation to all employees that might be you know, things like the handbook, policies, IT policies, security policies and all of those kind of things. Um, and uh, actually in, in kind of a legal sense, having provided these to the employees in a way that they can electronically download does fulfill your kind of responsibilities. Um, so uh, we're creating like a space in the portal in order to make it very easy for HR managers to pull all of those documents up for employees to be able to search and, and to get around them. 
Um, so all of this stuff is actually kind of standard Drupal, which is which is really great. Um, and we can kind of add to that, um, you know, as we continue to kind of develop. Um, so you're able to kind of just search here. So we'll go HR, and that will bring back the HR. You can see the details of this. You can download all of the documents. There might be some extra details here uh, about the documents, and then being able to download all of that stuff. Uh, so just getting it in, you know, kind of one place where you know it takes the weight off, uh, and out of kind of wikis and things like that. Um, cool. Uh, any questions about that? Quite uh, we've also got kind of a little block on the home page as well, which uh, which shows kind of, and you can highlight the relevant ones uh, at the bottom here. So HR documents and downloads. <coughs> um, uh, emergency contacts, we've covered that. So the staff directory. Um, so, uh, you know, making the most of the fact that this is kind of directly integrated into the HR system portal. Um, you're able to kind of go to the staff directory, so we might search here. So find Jamie. No. Oh, is it Kat? There we go. So Jamie Novi is coming up. Contact details and so on and so forth. We'll add little pictures in there, so you get like the image of the person, etc. So you yeah. know, kind of not hugely complicated stuff, but useful all the same. Um, and then also we're linking through to kind of Civi HR's uh, vacancy flow as well. So Civi HR uh, in the previous version already has kind of support for uh, people applying for vacancies and vacancy management. Uh, so these are kind of jobs that you have available in your organisation, um, and you're able to add, uh, you're able to kind of offer these internally uh, first, basically, and people can take go through the application process internally. Uh, so this is just a screen within the, you know, the self-service portal for that. Um, so you're able to search. Uh, we would like to add kind of some more stuff to uh, to the search, but uh, there's some reasons why there isn't so much there. Um, uh, more details, etc., and then being able to apply now. And then we've got a bit of styling to do kind of on this page here, where you know you put in your details, etc., and take them through the application process for for, for the vacancies. Um, does anybody want me to go through the vacancy stuff? Because I have all this stuff, so that's all right. Cool. Uh, so that's kind of the self service portal. Any questions on that? Uh, great. Uh, so, uh, moving on a little bit about the roadmap. I didn't do all the transitions, that's completely by accident. Um, so, um, we're currently working on version 1.5 uh, and looking to kind of, you can see that the self-service portal is kind of almost there uh, and bringing all of that stuff together. Uh, and the job contract history is there uh, and losing that and job roles needs a little bit of work in the contract somewhere. Um, the roadmap for, for 1.6 is uh, to work a lot on kind of dashboards and reports. Um, so we've got a lot of data in the system uh, at now, and we're trying to look at how we can kind of create some really nice uh, reports uh, for users and interactive dashboards. Um, so I'll show you just some of the wireframes that we've got for that. So I think some people may have gone to the kind of Civi Drupal integration uh, uh, session uh, yesterday. So I'll be kind of relying a lot heavily on that. So we'll have kind of some interactive uh, reports uh, where actually you can click into particular parts of the report and that updates the data. So you're then able to export out and sort of navigate around it and kind of see the split by you know department, location level, all of these different things that we're entering in and roles. Uh, and seeing kind of different head counts, uh, so gender counts uh, and different stats and ages and things like that, so that the HR manager can kind of report on all of that kind of stuff really easily and visually as well. So no more exporting to Excel. Um, appraisal <coughs> process management. So um, one of the big things that uh, that's on the kind of agenda uh, for the pilot clients is managing kind of appraisals. So knowing that um, appraisals need to take place, making sure that they do take place, 
and recording kind of the, the grades after those appraisals, and then doing a little bit of stats around kind of uh, the distribution of those appraisals as well. So that's kind of a, a next big piece for the for 1.6. Um, we'll also be doing some improvements to uh, the way that recruitment works. So currently the, uh, there's a recruitment process within Civi. Uh, then we need uh, the feedback from the pilot clients was that they'd like to have a little bit more control about how they see people <coughs> through the process, how many people are at which stages, so we're going to kind of create a dashboard type view to be able to see all of that stuff as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then later down the line we've got uh, training, so integrating into the system uh, the ability to record kind of people's development and training, which courses they should be on, where they've been to, be able to track all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, uh, congruent to kind of the way that events is working and re repeating events as well, so there'll be some work there. Um, asset tracking, so knowing kind of what uh, devices have been allocated to which people and making sure that all of that is kind of tracked in there. Uh, and uh, disciplinary, so I don't know all too much about that bit yet, uh, but disciplinary will, will be in there as well. Um, so um, what does that all mean uh, in terms of timing? Um, so we're currently uh, coming towards the end of the, the 1.5 kind of development cycle, uh, and actually there'll be some crossover between version 1.5 and 1.6, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, we'll be starting on kind of 1.6 and the development plan points, probably taking us about six months or so, getting us up to the end of the year. Um, and the target is that by the end of this year we have what we would call a, a minimum viable product. So at that point we'd be looking to spread the word a little bit more widely uh, about CVHR and have a proper launch uh, and start looking at kind of the marketing for the product. Um, so during the run up to that we'll be looking at a hosting platform. So how we can kind of provide this under some sort of SaaS model so that uh, you know, people aren't kind of dependent on installing this themselves so that they're able to you know, have to a certain extent some way of signing up and paying for it monthly. Uh, and then we'll be starting on the development for version 1.7 uh, for those extra features which are kind of, you know, uh, will be the con continual development of the platform and stuff. Cool. Uh, so, in a kind of... Oh, In a kind of Apple-like way, one more thing, mm -hmm. tasks and assignments. This is some really cool stuff uh, that we're really pleased of. So um, there was a need from the clients uh, within the HR field, and I think that this is also true within Civi in, in many senses, about kind of tracking uh, tasks that you need to do. So this is something that I need to do and deal with, uh, and it needs to be done in the future, and assigning that to somebody else, or a series of tasks that needs to be done. And the truth is, is that although Civi has kind of its activity structure, it doesn't um, deal with this kind of workflow in, in the nicest and neatest of ways. It's not that well integrated in kind of your dashboard. It's not easy to know what tasks you're supposed to be doing. It's not easy to assign them. It's not even easy to manage that process. Um, so we, we've done a really big amount of work uh, in looking at how we can kind of improve this and have uh, developed a, or are in the process of developing, I get the, a task and assignments module. Um, actually, what I will do is I will show you the design for it. So this is all kind of building off the... Can everybody see that? Yeah, cool. Uh, so this is all kind of building off activities. Um, so each task will be kind of like a special type of activity, and you're able to kind of log in here and people will have a new dashboard where they log in and see the tasks that are assigned that the HR manager has to do today. Um, we'll also be integrating this into the self-service portal so that you can assign a task to a staff member or a manager and they'll be able to kind of look at those tasks and see what they are. Um, and you're able to easily filter through for those tasks which are kind of overdue, due today, things that are happening in the future. Um, <coughs> now, what we're working really hard to do is to try and create this so that it can be integrated or just be an extension for standard CV as well. So this will be something that will be out there hopefully uh, in the next couple of months uh, that people can kind of download and use with the existing city. Um, so um, there are then aspects of this which are then specific to uh, HR. 
So we also have a document kind of management process. So a big part of HR, uh, especially with the onboarding process, is around getting the documents or legal documents that you need from people, whether it be visas, passports, uh, you know, uh, evidence of uh, you know, driving licenses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and obviously those documents, if you're onboarding 20 people, 50 people, you know, in one intake, uh, can be really significant and hard to track. Um, so within the dashboard, uh, there will also be the, uh, the, the document kind of management, so being able to see which documents and where they're up, uh, and a full process for that as well, uh, and a block on the uh, self-service portal for people to upload these. I'll just show that. Is that on this? I might not So people will have a little block here where on the self-service dashboard where somebody will be able to log in and they'll say, okay, I'm awaiting uh, upload for, say, my driving license. They'll be able to upload that document and then those will come through into the HR admin tab on the contact record for them to be able to approve and say, yes, that one's there, as we can kind of see. So uh, I'm just going to dive into the actual, show you where this is. So this is in kind of heavy... Uh, development at the moment, uh, so excuse things that don't quite work yet. Uh, so let's do test some time to you. Please load. Okay, there we go. Okay, some cool. Uh, so uh, this will become kind of like the, the HR new home screen. People are able to log in here. Um, you will be able to kind of like split between, uh, how you can do already, uh, the tasks and filter those down, uh, and be able to kind of look at the details here for the task, but isn't very much more. Uh, edit the task. Um, we're going to look at kind of doing some edit and play stuff there, but um, we started off by kind of working with modal. So, details. Cool. Save. That's great. Uh, and uh, being able to kind of mark that task as completed there, so we can just do that. You're able to filter through, so if you are delegating tasks to other members of the team, you're able to filter through and just see the ones that you've delegated, uh, just see the ones which are yours or all of the tasks. Um, I think these tabs aren't quite there yet. Not very much of those. And the reports are coming through. Okay, so the reports will bring through kind of like the existing CV dashboard. Um, so you won't lose any of the existing functionality and you can still pop all the reports coming into there and this can kind of sit on the top. Um, if I go through, you'll also see on the contact tab, there'll be a tasks uh, list here. So for this contact, Jamie, I can quickly go and take a look at him and say, oh, okay, well, these are the tasks uh, that I need to do. These are the ones that have been done already uh, and kind of manage all of that. Um, so that's kind of tasks as individual entities on their own. Um, but um, in HR contexts and probably in lots of other contexts, um, tasks tend to happen in kind of series. So because we're onboarding this person, there are these five tasks that we need to do. Um, and actually probably all of you are relatively familiar with Civi Case. Is anybody here not familiar with Civi Case? Okay, <laughs> other, than, other than Paul, I'll explain it to you later. Um, so Civi Case is kind of like a uh, a wrapper around a series of tasks that puts them on a rail. Um, and what's quite cool about that is that it kind of, you can say, well, these are the, the tasks that need to happen on any particular case of this type. And also, this is like the offset of the uh, dates between these tasks need to happen and when they need to happen. Um, so we're kind of lifting off that in order to have our assignments. So an assignment is kind of a series of tasks. So here we're able to say, okay, right, the assignment is joining, uh, and here is the standard timeline, so this is the CIVI kind of standard timeline, or you might have slightly different timelines uh, if you have, say, a different onboarding process for different types of staff member. So you can build kind of all of that in. And here then you're able to say, okay, well these are the tasks that should be in there. Um, you will actually, uh, when we get to the final version of this, be able to... Um, uh, for the HR version of the extension. So what we'll have is one version which is kind of tasks for Civi, and then we'll have another extension which adds to it for kind of Civi HR. 
um, you'll be able to kind of add uh, the odd task if you need to, uh, and also any documents that can be part of it as well. And those will all be stored as kind of, um, I know I'm going into a bit technical with the CV, but CV case configurations. So you'll be able to specify and say, okay, well this assignment process is just a CV case type with our different tasks that need to happen on there. So all integrating in all the existing kind of city stuff that we already know. Um, cool, uh, I think this doesn't work at the moment. So I'm just gonna press it and get a nasty error. Yes, please specify a task array, I thought I did. Um, okay, cool, uh, I don't know if we've got any document stuff yet. No, we don't have any documents yet. So that is tasks and assignments. Just uh, I mean, some of the other features for the tasking will be uh, uh, a task digest email which will go out to uh, people who have tasks which are assigned to them that need to happen, I think it is that week. Um, so you get kind of a, a nice email which kind of tells you all the stuff that, uh, that you need to do basically. Cool. Any questions on that? Um, so yeah, so I think that's some really cool stuff there. Uh, okay, so what now? Uh, so you're very welcome to check out the demos. Uh, there's a version 1.4 demo at hrmaster.demo.cvcrm.org. Um, so 1.4 doesn't include kind of a self-service portal uh, and uh, is actually kind of just there for development for reference to kind of see what the state of the project's at. Uh, version 1.5, so this is kind of the one that's actively maintained and kept up to date and so you can see kind of the development of the project. Uh, so that's available there. Uh, we'll make a nice URL for it at some point. Um, but please remember that we're in active development at the moment. So, you know, this is not a finished product. This is something that is in iterative and active development. What you'll find on there may have some bugs, well, will have definitely some bugs. But it's a great place to go and take a look and see kind of how the project's coming along. Um, so, all the code is on the Concord GitHub account, uh, so you're welcome to go there and have a play with it. Uh, and lots of other code is on there as well, so you're welcome to have a look at any extensions we've got from there. Um, all the specifications and mockups are available on the wiki. Uh, so we've got, uh, on the main Civi wiki, there's a Civi HR kind of part of that wiki. So you're, you're welcome to kind of go and take a look there and see kind of what the stuff going to be. Uh, it, it's quite detailed, tells you kind of all the intricacies of all the user stories that we've got and all the wireframes are kind of on there. Uh, and the designs are in the InVision. Uh, and there's links from the wiki as well, so under the useful links, uh, you'll find kind of a link to the InVision and then you can kind of take a look through all the designs and stuff there. Um, and actually, one of, one of the things that we're working towards is trying to unify kind of the design across the application. Um, so, what else? Uh, Becoming a pilot client. So um, we're not actively looking for clients and paid work for this application at this stage, but will be towards the end of the year in order to kind of roll it out. Um, but what we would very much be interested in is organisations who uh, have a need for HR and would like to contribute and be part of the project as we're kind of developing the application. Um, so. Um, you will get, for that, a tailored HR application, which is right for your organisation. Um, but we do expect a significant amount of engagement, so feedback on features uh, and a certain amount of your time in order to uh, understand you know, what your needs are uh, and going through all of that kind of stuff. Um, so if you think that's you, uh, then do get in touch with either myself or Ruchi from Driscount. Uh, and I'd be really happy to have a chat about whether or not it's kind of suitable and going to work for everybody. Can I just ask, are any of the pilot clients at the moment kind of dependent on it, i.e. have they switched over and this is their exclusive HR system? Um, so I think that uh, two of them, that is the case. Um, and what's really interesting about what we've seen is the fact that, you know, for, for some quite large organisations of, you know, 100 staff members plus, <coughs> they're still doing things with Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and, and it's amazing to kind of see, I mean, the things that I've seen done with Excel spreadsheets and the police as well, it's like crazy. Um, but like, you know, so, uh, you know, there is definitely, uh, you know, a benefit of the, you know, the current version of the software for them. Um, but what I would say is that, you know, uh, in terms of a development process for building a product like this, although we want to get really good feedback from as many organisations as possible and welcome people's feedback as well, um, 
you know, it, it's hard to manage both the bills and also managing clients and upgrades and all of those kind of things with active data. Um, so we do kind of have a, a specialised list there. Any other? Well, uh, I should say any other questions, actually. <laughs> any other questions? That's cool. Um, just one on the, on the user interface, I think you touched on it. Is, is everything moving towards those kind of Photoshop mockups that the idea uh, So that is the ideal. That's the direction of travel. Um, and <coughs> we've had some discussions with the core team about how we might work together in order to get this rolled out across CIVI and CIVI HR. Um, it's at the very embryonic stages at the moment, but the ambition is certainly there. Uh, and as you can see, we will be doing that for City HR anyway. So um, it's just kind of a question of time. Um, all right, thinking that this is a um, City HR is a sort of standalone installation to me. Um, is there another any plans to sort of integrate it? Yeah. So um, it. That's a kind of a question that's been raised a few times in terms of the project. Uh, at the early stages of the project, um, the, there was kind of this thought that, well, actually, if we're already on City, you know, for fundraising, uh, why don't we just have a set of extensions which also turn it into an HR application? Um, now, um, in in most organisations, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, the there isn't that much overlap between our fundraising application. Uh, in terms of the fact that you know this is where our client contacts uh, are kind of going in and how we're managing all of that, and uh, well, actually our staff member information, uh, which is kind of a quite a high risk kind of element, uh, which might want to be kind of kept separate. And most organisations would naturally kind of think of those as two separate systems. The touch points that we've seen is more around kind of single sign-on. Uh, and wanting somebody, you know, you don't want to have lots of usernames and passwords for lots of different systems. So, um, the, the, what we're doing in terms of the CVHR project from this point forward is, is to create, uh, sorry for being technical, but a Drupal distribution. So this will be a Civi and Drupal together uh, that can be rolled out kind of as a, hopefully relatively off the shelf, but obviously customised to your needs if you need to because it's based on open source. Um, and uh, in that sense, we have hijacked some of the features of Civi in order to kind of use for city HR. So you'll see cases is kind of used as assignments and there's kind of plans to use events for uh, training. So we wouldn't anticipate um, you know, it being easy to have your fundraising CRM and city on there. Um, but if you've got experience as an organization with Sydney and Drupal already, then it should be very natural to do that. And actually the single sign-on between two Drupal sites is very easy to do as well. Yeah. Any other questions? On, on assignments, you're, you're saying that that's, some of that's going to go back into the into sort of CRM? So the task and assignments module that you're seeing there will be a standalone extension which will, I absolutely want it to be and will be uh, something that can then be uh, part of you know a normal CV installation so it won't impact on the existing kind of CV stuff because uh, I think that's a super useful thing that kind of the CV you know, can do with uh, which is like a really good task in management of uh, assignments kind of module that builds on kind of cases and stuff and, and looks pretty. Cool, anyone? Okay, uh, I'll let you guys get off. I'm just going to do a little plug. Uh, we're launching kind of a new sub brand or design based uh, sub brand for US and stuff called Geek Label that's coming soon. Uh, so I'll put that out there. Uh, and great, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Yeah.